Hey guys, today I'm just going to go over Genie, a little bit more of a beginner-centric video. Um, so I just wanted to show Genie some love. It was the first IDE that I started using um, outside of just this kind of hacky Java one in my first Java course. And uh, I think they recently had a big update, Genie 2.0. So I just wanted to go over some stuff about the editor, how to configure it, and how to get started. Um, and I'd say as a complete beginner, Genie's probably your best choice, especially if you're doing C, C++, um, maybe even Golang. And one of the reasons for that is because Genie's very small, it's very lightweight, and it is um, cross-platform. So it's on Mac, Linux, Windows, and I think its main claim to fame is it being extremely fast and small. And you can see here in the description, a fast and lightweight IDE. Um, built with GTK, which is part of the reason it is cross-platform. And you can see here, it's all C and C++. So really small, really fast, built with compiled languages, whereas something like Visual Studio Code is pretty much TypeScript with, um, I forget the name for it, but it's where you kind of containerize a web page and it becomes an app, oh, Electron. So VS Code is like an Electron app. Um, add some abstraction, add some slowdown, definitely much more featureful. And as you become more advanced, I'd say you either go down the Vim Emacs path or the VS Code path. But just for getting started, I don't think there's a better choice than Genie. And it comes with some good default plugins, but there's also some that you can download uh, in the Genie plugins repository. Uh, pretty simple setup. They've got some good install instructions. Uh, for most Linux distributions, it'll come bundled, or you can install the plugin separately. Um, everything is in the .config uh, folder, so you can add um, plugins that way. You can technically control the configuration that way, but I'd suggest using the application itself. And you can also add different themes in .config, Genie, I think just themes. Add some comp files there, and they'll show up. So it's very simple, easy to get started with. And uh, I think when I first started using Genie is when I first started doing C and C++. I don't have that much experience with either language, but uh, I took a course in that over college, and I think they were recommending code blocks, but I found Genie, really liked it, and just stuck with it. Um, so here you can see I've just got the most simple C++ file you can have. You've got folding. Um, you don't have the best syntax highlighting just because you're not using tree sitter, but this is what most text editors would give you. And what I do like is this little document browser here. You do have in your tools different plugins that you can use. So you, there's a debugger that I have enabled, uh, get change bar, so if you make changes you'll see something right there on the side, and Vim mode. So these are pretty much the only things that you need to get started with. I would recommend not using Vim mode out of the gate just because it will, uh, it will add some complexity. And if you are just a you know, pure beginner, I wouldn't really recommend going straight into Vim mode. So for this, I won't be having Vim mode enabled. I'll just be using it like a regular editor. So you can see here, int main, standard out. So if I compile this, I get a .o file. And if I build it, because um, there's no make file, as you can see, it'll just build a binary with the same name as the file that you're in. So if I run this here, you can see compilation finished successfully, and I get an output test file with test.cpp as the input file. And one of the neat things is if I run it, it's not going to give me the output inside of Genie. So one of the things I really like about Genie is its modularity. So if I go down to preferences, you will need to set this if you get some errors. If I go to tools and then terminal, this is the terminal command that's being run, where dash C is the command being supplied by Genie. So here I use WesTerm, so I have WesTerm here, and I've got that set up to work. So if I go in and run runner view current file, I'll just get a pop-up with hello world, exit code zero, perfect. So you can see here everything works pretty much out of the box. There's nothing too much that you have to add, but you can kind of grow with Genie until you feel that you've kind of reached the borders, and then go down either that you know minimal configurable editor path or go down the 
more mainstream VS Code path, both of which are great options. I've used both um, writing production software, but this is just a little overview of Genie. One nice thing is that Genie LSP is coming, I believe. This is a repository where it's enabled, and apparently this is gonna be merged soon with the main Genie um, repository, meaning that Genie could be a, a liable C++ IDE for more professional production level code, especially because it's so quick and small. Uh, you can see even with the LSP implementation here, it's pretty much all C and C++. So you'll get a nice fast, uh, like, you know, portable, or not portable, but cross-platform editor that has LSP enabled as a Vim mode. So if you do want to start using Vim, you can. Um, and you just get a lot of out-of-the-box setup that you don't have to fuss over as you would in maybe other editors, especially building and running. But you will need a terminal. You will have to use one just in um, in the run command, just so you pass that terminal name in there. I think the default is Xterm, but I'm on Wayland, so naturally when I first started compiling stuff, that was a no-go. I had to switch it to the terminal that I'm currently using. Um, again, really short overview of Genie. I do recommend getting started. Again, here I've got... Um, all my key commands uh, and preferences. You can set everything here through key bindings. You can kind of control the terminal. There is a terminal uh, plugin that you can use to get a little terminal window. There's a file tree plugin, which I think I mentioned before. Um, and again, the main thing I like is it's just super small and super easy to use. It allows you to just focus on coding. You don't have to really worry about learning an editor. Um, even though VS Code is really simple, there is some overhead to getting started, installing plugins for C and C++, um, and then figuring out how to run it through the editor, which isn't a huge hassle, but what I like about Genie is you just start coding, doing simple problems. You wanna do C++ or leak code problems in C++ locally. That seems like a great place to start with this. Um, and it does introduce you to a little bit more because you do have to interface with the terminal to run commands, but not so much to the point where it's a barrier to learning programming. So if I could go back and do it over, I'd use Genie again. Uh, the only change I'd make is I'd try to use Vim mode with it and get comfortable with some of those movements. All right, that's pretty much it for today. I'm gonna go over some Lua NeoVim plugin stuff uh, in the near future. Uh, definitely give Genie a try. If you know someone that wants to start programming, I definitely suggest you recommend it to them. And if you're in that boat yourself, you can't go wrong with Genie. All right, thank you guys.